Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We will discuss tactics to help you reach out to military families in your community for the Blue Star Museums program. I'm Wendy Clark, Director of Museums, Visual Arts, and Indemnity here at the NEA, and I'll be your moderator. First, we have a few housekeeping items. You are all muted and will only be able to hear us. Following the presentations, we'll have a, a question and answer session. Throughout this webinar, you can submit questions or comments at any time using the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. We will do our best to address as many as we can during the time allowed. Please do not use the raise hand button. This webinar will also uh, be posted in the audio and video section of our website just in a, in a few days, so you can refer to it in the future and let others know about it. Before our presenters start, I'd like to thank all of our participating museums for helping us raise awareness of the program. Please remember our big announcement date is tomorrow, Tuesday, May 16th. That is the date when the press release goes out, and we encourage you to share information about your participation in Blue Star Museums on and after that date. So without further ado, let's get started. We are going to try and finish this up in about 30 minutes to offer some time for questions and answers. Thanks to all our Blue Star Museums for your partnership, this program would be merely a nice idea if it weren't for your commitment. At the Arts Endowment, we believe in partnerships at the national, state, and local level, and we also encourage access to the arts to many different audiences. Participating museums are featured on this map on our website at arts.gov. We will update this all summer long. I want to remind you about the importance of the PR Toolkit, which can be found here on this page. This will give you not only marketing materials, media resources, but also sample press releases and PR tips. Military families use this to plan their summer trips. They go to the map, click on a state and the city where they might be visiting, and they'll see a drop-down list of all the participating museums. So who is eligible? The free admission program is available to any bearer of a Geneva Convention Common Access Card, commonly known as the CAC, a DD Form 1173 ID card, known as a dependent ID, or a DD Form 1173-1 ID card, which includes active duty U.S. military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, as well as members of the National Guard and Reserve, U.S. Public Health Service Commissioned Corps, NOAA Commissioned Corps, and up to five family members. So what family members can visit a Blue Star Museum? A family member of of active duty military may include a spouse or child, aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc. It's important to remember that the active duty member does not have to be present to their, for their family members to enjoy a visit to a museum. That means a military spouse can attend. Just show the proper ID as described here. Same is true with a grandparent. And if you have any questions about audiences, refer to the Frequently Asked Questions section of the PR Toolkit. If you're unsure about an admissions situation, just use your best judgment. And when in doubt, it would be wonderful to, to err on the side of generosity. Here are some of the benefits of, of taking part in the Blue Star Museums program, which might be odd, obvious, but important to stress. It's a great way to reach out to perhaps a community you haven't reached as well as you had wanted to. It's a great way to align with or enhance those efforts, whether 
and, and deepen your ties to this audience throughout the summer. They also can become uh, new members or, or repeat visitors all year long. Do you need a positive news story? This is it. Even museums that don't have a big military audience recognize the benefits of this gesture of military appreciation. By participating, museums are creating a new generation of lifelong museum goers. I'd like to introduce Susie Guardia from the Blue Star Families Program. She's the Arts and Neighbors Senior Program Manager. Hi there, Susie. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, and I just want to point out one thing in my title that it says Arts and Neighbors. And that means that we consider all of our museum partners to be our neighbors. Um, and it's part of a, a larger group of Americans who are really coming together on behalf of military families. And we thank you not just as museums, but as neighbors as well. So engaging your military families. The most important thing to remember is that military families, first and foremost, are families just like any other. They want to have fun together. They want to learn and explore. They want to make memories. Um, that being the same uh, as other families, there are a few significant differences that you need to keep in mind to help military families make the most of their visit to your site. While they arrive at your site looking just like any other family, there might be a tantrum throwing two-year-old or a sulky teenager or kids that are running in different directions, um, there are a lot of challenges that military families face that are not readily apparent. A parent may be deployed and in harm's way. The family may have just moved to this area, and this may be their fourth move in six years. A family may be dealing with the effects of traumatic brain injury or a wounded soldier at home. This family may be visiting to celebrate a homecoming or preparing for a deployment. They may be on their way to a new home in another state and have stopped by your site on their, on their journey. Or they may just want to be out to have a great day together. You and your frontline staff should keep all these possibilities in mind when welcoming the family to the site. At heart, though, these families are looking for community. You may have just welcomed a future docent, a workshop or camp attendee, a military family advisor, or a potential new member who's walked in your door. Creating community. I think this is really the most important reason that military families are seeking you out. They want connection, but many don't know where to start when they arrive in a new community. This may be their first stop at a museum since they themselves went on a field trip as a child with a school group. The more you reach out to the local military family, resources around you, the more knowledge you will have of your specific community profile. And the more you know and connect before families arrive at your door, the more prepared you will be to have a successful and ongoing relationship with them. These are just a number of the basic resources to start with in your local community. To make connections, talk about your work with the military community. The more you publicize this uh, effort on your website and at your front desk, the more families will know about you and therefore seek you out. Please make sure that your frontline staff knows that you are participating um, in Blue Star Museums and what that participation means to you as an organization, as an institution, and to the families that you're serving. There is nothing worse than when a family has to pull up your own website at your front desk to educate them about their participation or your, your participation when they get there. On the flip side, there is nothing better than when a family arrives and is asked if they're a military family and then warmly welcomed when they say they are. This first interaction is so crucial to the families feeling connected to you. Social media. Military families, by and large, are young families, and they are very, very social media savvy. 
Remember these are families who move all the time and they use social media to stay in touch with friends and family across the world. They are completely social media junkies. So join um, the Blue Star Families Facebook groups. Um, we have lots of groups in lots of different communities across the country. Have a presence on other military-based uh, groups and, and networks that are out there. And use your own social media to promote your engagement and celebration of military family service that you are doing by participating in this program. I could go on and on with testimonials from our Blue Star families who visit museums. The thread that weaves through all of them, though, is gratitude. By participating in this program, you are honoring the sacrifices that the family is making in defense of our country. They are proud of what the service member in their family contributes, and Blue Star Museum shows the family that you are proud and grateful to them, too. Do not underestimate the power of your participation and the strong message it sends to these families that they are valued and a part of the community as well. Remember, we are here at Blue Star Families to help you. We try to spread the word all summer of what is going on for military families. We are happy to promote you and your activities. Keep in mind, please, that we can't be the PR department for every one of the 2,000 member uh, museums who join us, but we're happy to help spread the word. Uh, my background is in uh, museums as an educator, so if you send me blogs and images, we are happy to repost those and get those out. Um, if your city is hosting multiple events over the course of a specific weekend, let us know. Uh, we do have a social media office of one person, but she is dynamic and excited and involved and will help push that out to all of our contacts. Um, if you want to host an event with us, let us know. I'll put you in touch with our chapters, our volunteers across the country who can work hand in hand with you to reach out to military families in your community. And just as a final tip, it's never too early to start planning for next year. If you have something in mind, Think about it and get in touch with us now. We're happy to work uh, ahead of time, too. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. I especially appreciated your reminder that the frontline staff and the front desk staff um, are really important to make sure they're aware of the, of the program and who, who is part of it for free admission. Next up. We've got Bruce Moody, Public Affairs Specialist for Military Community and Family Policy with the Department of Defense. Bruce. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, good day, everybody. Thank you for being part of this call, or uh, thank you for listening in, the, in its recorded form. Uh, we're really excited. I, 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 I have to say, uh, on behalf of the Department of Defense, we love this program. It is just a fantastic program. Um, and, and, and we say that because we hear from military families across the country uh, about what this program means to them. And uh, uh, I would also just say that the, uh, the Department of Defense really is uh, uh, buffered in a very strong and positive way uh, through partnerships. And uh, this initiative allows um, museums across the country to partner in support of military families in a, in a, in a really wonderful way. And just as, as a, one way that the, uh, we, we find that families uh, use Blue Star Museums is, uh, as, as it is for many people, they, they are moving. Uh, they time their moves uh, coast to coast, for example, for the summertime. And they will go to the Blue Star Museums website and they'll, they'll um, find uh, museums that are along their route, and they'll make plans to stop there. So we thank you for very, very much for, for, for what you do. So my main message to you today is that I am available to you to answer any questions you have on how to reach the military community. My email address is at the back of this slide deck, so you can scroll back and uh, have a look. And uh, I, um, I try to make myself as accessible as possible. Um, now, that's one way of uh, reaching the communities by, is by working through me. 
Um, another way is, is by finding local resources. Um, I would strongly recommend, if you don't know already, uh, to find out the, uh, the military installations that are close to you. Uh, we maintain a website called militaryinstallations.dod.mil up on the screen, and it's essentially a directory of, uh, of museums. And uh, you can very easily punch in your location and find out what's nearer to you. So then the next step is what to do. So you find a museum, you find an installation that's, that's near you, and I would recommend that you find the contact for the public affairs officer and simply uh, send them a, give them a phone call, give them an email, reach out to them, and uh, explain that you're participating in Blue Star Museums. Of course, nowadays they're running Facebook pages and Twitter feeds, and they've got websites and all kinds of ways. And uh, trust me, they will be very, very happy. Um, so I'm retired Navy. I retired from the Navy in 2007. I've always done public affairs. I've worked on several installations over the course of my time. And uh, when you're trying to fill a, a Facebook feed with content, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing better than getting free stuff. <laughs> so make their day. Call them up. Introduce yourself. And they will be very, very happy to work with you. Uh, at the DOD level, um, although we are military community and family policy, we, we prefer to go by military one source. That's uh, pretty much our storefront. This the, the vehicle by, uh, through which we uh, reach out to military families. So we have a whole suite of uh, social media channels, and uh, I manage them. So if you reach out to me with uh, the email that's in the back, and you send me pretty much anything from a photo to a press release to, to information about events that you've got coming up. I'll do my best to, to uh, support that and to, and to, and to, to push that out. Um, I try to use Facebook as much as possible because we, we have the, the greatest number of, um, we reach the greatest number of people through Facebook. But we do have a lot of competing interests, so we'll do what we can. Sometimes Twitter, sometimes YouTube. We'll we'll do what we can to to get out as much as we we can about uh, what you are offering to the community. Um, if you want to find us on Twitter and Facebook, these are our handles. Um, we we reach a couple of hundred thousand. Uh, family members uh, each day uh, over the course uh, of, of our engagement. And, uh, you know, we try to make it interesting. Um, anyone who, who tries to reach an audience using social media uh, is quickly humbled by the fact that uh, your best day of work is uh, eclipsed by a cat video. That's just the name of the game. That's just the environment in which we work. So we try to... Um, find tactics and, and outreach ways to, 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 to make things fun for people. So one of the things that we do on our Facebook page is we have a thing called Name That Installation. And we will post a picture of an installation and encourage people to um, name that installation. This is a really uh, successful tactic. And, uh, and, the, and the story I, I, I often will bring up is that for April Fool's Day, we posted a picture of grass and just grass. But it turns out that this grass in, in, in Japan is, is unique or something to that effect, and people recognize that particular grass and uh, identified that installation. So what we've done is we've tweaked that tactic to name that installation. So we have the uh, opportunity to take photos that you provide us. If it's a photo like this one that's really um, uh, iconic to your museum, uh, send it to us, and we'll we'll try to get it in there. Again, we'll do the best we can with uh, getting out as much material as possible, but it is a very crowded workspace in which we work, and and our and our resources seem to be thinner and thinner um, every every year. So uh, on that, I will step back and just say thank you very much. Please be in touch with me. Um, I'm thrilled to be a part of Blue Star Museums, and I thank you very much for your support. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Bruce, for that insight. Hello, I'm Paulette Beat. I am the social media manager here at the NEA, and I'm going to share some ideas on using social media to publicize your participation in Blue Star Museums. So let's talk about the B word. In this case, the B word is branding. And I encourage you to spend some time thinking about how you can use your own social media platforms to brand yourself as a Blue Star Museum. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, but I want to share some ideas that we've done at the NEA over the previous summers of Blue Star Museums and some ideas we've seen others do. So one of the things we always do is create a cover image that we um, share on our Facebook page that incorporates the Blue Star Museum's logo and the dates of the program from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And we just have that up there to just remind people that, um, Blue, that the Blue Star Museum's program is taking place. On Twitter and Instagram, you want to think about always using the Blue Star Museum's hashtag, even if you're not sharing something that is specifically for a military family audience. Use Blue Star Museum's the hashtag to talk about your new exhibits, new acquisitions, family day events, just all sorts of things, whatever is going on at your museum, tag it with Blue Star Museums so that military community can find it and hopefully attend. We also follow the hashtag at the NEA, and so we're able to share your content throughout the summer and give you a bigger audience. You should plan on sending regular posts across your social media platforms, reminding your audience throughout the summer that you are one of Blue Star Museum and that the program is taking place, as we've said before, from Memorial Day through Labor Day. You might uh, want to remember to add photos to your Facebook post or your tweets to make them visually interesting. I'm sure you've seen the research as we have that photos tend to get more notice and help your content stand out from the crowd. So you can create original graphics like this one on the left, which is um, one of the museums took the Blue Star Museum's postcard, isolated the picture of the family, and made that their graphic. The one in the middle, you can't see it in action, but it's actually a GIF of the participating museum at night, and that was a really cool one to find. And then on the last one, on the right, the Rockwell Museum, um, oh, excuse me, the McNay Art Museum, took something that Blue Star Families had created and used it as part of their own campaign. For inspiration, we encourage you to check the hashtag to see what other kinds of creative content other Blue Star museums are sharing. And well, don't be afraid to borrow it. As I said, we'd also very much at the NEA like to show off your content. We have an Instagram feed and we'd like to encourage you all this summer to send us photos of special items from your collection, special spots in your museum, the places and the objects that you love that we'll be happy to share on our Instagram feed. Um, and this is just an assortment of images from Tudor Place Historic House, the Institute of Texas Cultures, Hampton Roads Naval Museum, and other museums that have participated in Blue Star Museums. If this is something you'd like to do, just send a good quality snap to me, beatp at arts.gov, and you'll find my email address again at the end of this presentation. Make sure to include the name of your museum, a description of the photo, and a photo credit. And as I said, we'll share them on the NEA Arts Instagram with the Blue Star Museum's hashtag. Um, one thing to keep in mind is to please only send us photos for which you have copyright permission. And we, once we receive your photos, we'll send you back our photo permissions form um, just to make sure that we've got copyright all taken care of. But we really look forward to receiving your photos this summer and to seeing the great content ideas you come up with for social media. Thank you. Thanks, Paulette.
So to remind everyone, tomorrow is the national launch. Please help us share the news. Use the PR toolkit. It has consistent, up-to-date language, tips, and sample materials. We really want to build momentum from now to Memorial Day. And you'll, everything's available at arts.gov slash Blue Star Museums. And we're going to go viral on May 16th with your help with the hashtag Blue Star Museums. A reminder, all the museums are featured on a map at arts.gov. And that's how they, families plan their trips. They click on the state and see what museums appear in what different, in different cities. That concludes our presenters portion of the webinar. Thanks to Paulette, Susie, and Bruce. And now we'd like to respond to some of your questions. So first of all, yeah, we've, we've got a few, so please don't be shy. But the first one is there will be a PDF copy of the slides of this presentation available um, in a few days. Um, and um, we want to remind you that you can send, um, ask us any questions, as, as, as Bruce pointed out, too. He, he would love to hear from you. We, um, we anticipate that um, we're going to have a lot of um, activity right, you know, right before Memorial Day. And we'll be working closely with, with you if you have any questions. So a question, let's see. Well, someone's asked a specific question about reaching out to a, an installation. Um, the, the DOD has a military installation website where you can locate contact information for a public affairs officer. Um, is there any more specifics about that, Bruce, that would be helpful if they're having trouble? Is this the Fort Gordon question? Yeah, Fort Gordon one. Sorry. All right. Um, so it looks like, looks like we're trying to reach uh, the, the public affairs office at uh, Fort Gordon. Uh, specifically, yeah, I'm not sure why their their site would be. Uh, please send me actually. So this is for um, Michelle. Michelle, if you could uh, go to the back of this uh, slide deck and find my email address, and send me uh, just an email address so I have a way of contacting you, and I'll look up the public affairs office for Fort Gordon. And I'll, I'll get you a, a contact, so you can just contact them directly. Great. Uh, Paulette, can you answer the one about the social media? Sure. There's a question about if we're interested in receiving videos for social media. Um, yes, you can feel free to send them. Um, but they have to be about 30 seconds, which I think is the maximum amount of time on Instagram. And we will share them if possible. And of course, we, um, they still have the same copyright issues, so we'll need you to get to sign a permissions form just saying that you're free and clear to share that video. But yes, we'd love to see them. Great. Thanks, Paulette. Um, we have a question about tracking your, your, agency, your museum's uh, past participation in the program. If you are unsure of how many years your museum has participated and it would be useful for you to um, have that information for marketing, um, send an email to um, bluestarmuseums at arts.gov and just name your museum and say, can we look up the history for you? And, and um, we'll be happy to do that. Susie, I'm going to ask you to respond to a question about what kinds of activities are military families looking for? Um, that is a great question. And I'm going to go back a little bit to what I was saying, is that military families are families first. 
and they like the same kinds of things that every other family is going to like. Um, scavenger hunts, family days, um, unique opportunities to see things behind the scenes, um, guided tours, nature walks. Um, it really doesn't matter what kind of museum or um, cultural site you are. You don't necessarily have to create something special, but I think sometimes the invitation to the community is what makes it so important, that when you reach out and invite military families um, and thank them for their service in particular, it's the invitation that makes it special for them, not necessarily the program. Thank you. Thanks, Fred Paulette. I mean, Susie. Let's see. Um, there's another question about if you're already free, is it worth your while to sign up or promote other museums in your community to sign up? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, take, for example, the Smithsonian museums here in DC. Um, you know, they are free all year round. Um, thanks to Congress and everyone's tax tax contributions, so we encourage them to sign up because of the help with the marketing and social media and access to all the resources and ways to um, reach out to the community that we've described today. Um, the next question is about contacts for regional military family groups. Bruce, could you help with that? Well, OK. So I would say I, I'm not familiar with regional military family groups. Um, we, the, you know, the, um, what I would say is that um, there, so we're going to be putting out messages at a DOD level, and those messages will be picked up and shared by the services and uh, uh, a lot of the services uh, have have now regional um, um, management uh, uh, commands, but but as far as regional military family groups, uh, not so much. Um, the Blue Star families folks probably have an answer for that. What I would say though is that when you do contact an installation um, and you're talking with the public affairs officer. You can also ask about family readiness groups. Um, each each uh, installation or, or, or um, a command on an installation typically has a, a, a group of volunteers who, who look after military families. You can imagine uh, somebody who, who makes the rounds to check on family members uh, while in the midst of a deployment. So when you're in touch with a when you're in touch with an uh, an installation, the public affairs officer and then the family readiness groups. And for the other half of this, I'm going to turn this over to Blue Star families. Yeah, I would say we have some thirty plus uh, groups of volunteers and chapters across the country. And we work, uh, we're, we happily work with you if you're in our direct community, but we do send out newsletters and other kinds of information to families all across the country, whether they're in our main hotspot cities or not, um, highlighting things because we know that families are moving throughout the year. They are traveling, they are in their cars, driving to see grandparents and to, to their new locations. And they are looking for those museums that sometimes aren't right on an installation, but are on the way from one to another. And we will work with you to get out that information um, as well. If you have special days going on, we will group those into some of our newsletters and include that information for museums that maybe right aren't outside um, a military location. Great. Thank you, Susie and Bruce. We had another question about the functionality of the map. If you find out that your museum link is not working, and actually I would encourage everyone to check that um, on our map, please let us know. And you can email uh, bluestarmuseums at arts.gov should your um, link receive some error uh, message. Sometimes when uh, between the re registration database and the transfer, um, you know, one one extra dash would result in a in a problem. So we appreciate your help with with improving that. The other thing uh, 
I would like to uh, respond to is some museums are free and or participate in this by their own choice all year long. That's fantastic. Um, I think general guidance would be to continue to use all these different tips to reach out to your military communities. Um, we will, after the program ends in the summer, we're going to do a, a survey for that you'll all receive and we really appreciate your candid assessment about the program and its strengths and weaknesses. Um, we'll also ask you for what ongoing programs you might offer and we will update the map um, for those intentions. I'd also, Susie also from Blue Star Families um, can weigh in on this. Yeah, we are thrilled for those of you who participate and offer this opportunity to families all year long. Um, and we'll work with you all so you can get in touch with me as well. I'm sure that my email is coming up on another slide. Um, but if you're, if you're available all year, we are more than happy to work with you um, and connect you with our chapters and our, our local folks to plan additional programs, raise awareness all year. And we're so grateful um, of those of those museums and institutions that participate all year. Um, so thank you for that. Here's the uh, email with the, I mean, the slide with the um, emails. Let me advance it so everybody can, there you go. Sorry about that. There you have access to it now. Let's see. Um, Another question we, we do get um, often is whether we can provide information about st statistics on how many people view your location through an NEA map. And I'm going to ask Paulette to respond to that. Hi. If your website has Google Analytics, you should be able to look under referrals, and you will be able to see how many um, how much traffic is coming to your website from arts.gov. So that's really the best way to find out. Just check your own Google Analytics. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. Another question we do sometimes get is, again, how, you know, what do we mean by military family and how many? And, of course, a reminder that um, the active duty military family member does not need to be with with the visitors. Um, in fact, of course, that's the intention of this whole program, which was really designed with the children of those deployed in, in mind. So um, if you can make a special attempt to um, inform your front desk staff, and I know that's you know, difficult because oftentimes they're volunteers helping to fill in gaps and, um, you know, it doesn't always work perfectly. But um, again, if you can err on the side of generosity, that would be fantastic. Let's see. If um, we've had a couple really specific questions that um, are more about. Uh, specific uh, design projects or commissioning or special special activities a museum might want to pursue. And um, in some cases, that may mean you are interested in applying for an actual project grant from, from the NEA. And if, if that would be the case, you can, again, just send an email to Blue Star Museums at arts.gov and pose your, your specific situation, whether you're looking for artists to help you um, do special projects uh, aligned with the military visits, or if you're looking to commission something on your grounds. Um, those are a little too specific to respond to individually, but we will get back to you if you email us. We've had a request to go back to the, the PR resources kit. The URL for that is arts.gov slash blue star museums. Let's see. I 
I think the most of the other questions uh, I think have been answered in one way or another. I guess um, we we hope that most of you were were able to hear everything clearly and enjoyed the the presentation. Um, again, I remind you that you can email Blue Star Museums at arts.gov if, if you have any questions. This presentation will be available in a few days. And uh, we just want to reiterate, reiterate our thanks. And if, you, um, if you're thinking about the specifics around the announcement date, you can absolutely put that on, but we ask you to wait until tomorrow um, to really start promoting on the social media platform. And a reminder, it officially starts Memorial Day and, and, and goes through Labor Day. And um, we're going to be really uh, sort of rolling it out, building, building momentum. And reminder, again, to find that PR toolkit on our Blue Star Museums page. I want to thank all of my colleagues here, uh, Bruce Moody, Susie Guardia, Paulette Beatty, and then several uh, behind the scenes. Um, I'll be wrapping it up, and we look forward again to a successful summer. Thank you.